Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm bring you guys Week 17 quarterback start or sit decisions for fantasy football in 2020. Inside this video, we are going to be going over every single matchup from Sunday's games for week number 17. There's no Thursday night football or Monday night football this week because week 17, they put all the games on Sunday just because of the playoff implications, and that's just how the NFL has done it, at least recently from what I can remember. So before we get into it, I'd like to ask if that at any point inside of this video you end up enjoying, you end up having a great time, to please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. And if you're not new and you're already subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate if you could hit that like button down below. It helps me out a whole ton. And real quick before we get deep into it, I'd like to give you guys a quick word from my friends and my sponsor over at OverlayDFS.com. OverlayDFS.com is the best place to play daily fantasy sports on the whole World Wide Web. Now, there's two options on their website. you got the Progressive Tournaments, which I talked about in last week's videos. In this week's videos, we're going to be talking about the Match Up Shop on OverlayDFS.com. What is that? It is so, so simple. You pick between two players, plus or minus the spread. Who's going to score more fantasy points on Sunday Night Football? Was it Jarvis Landry minus 3.5 or Rashad Higgins plus 3.5? The answer was Jarvis Landry minus 3.5. Who scores more fantasy points? Baker Mayfield minus two and a half or Nick Chubb plus two and a half the answer was Baker Mayfield it is so so simple anyone can do it you guys do so much research to win your matchups every single week why not get some nice cashola on the upside here win these games on overlaydfs.com it is so simple I don't think the upside made sense there but what does make sense is winning money it's easy overlaydfs.com link down below in the description and we are back. Let's get into it. Week 17 quarterback start or sit decisions. We begin with the first game here, the Minnesota Vikings at the Detroit Lions. Now, as of right now, it seems as though Matthew Stafford is going to end up missing this game, which would result in Chase Daniel ending up getting the start. Now, if Matthew Stafford plays, I still would be very worried about starting him due to the injury potentially occurring again. This guy's a tank. He's a fucking animal. He wants to play every single game. and He's probably going to be playing his last ever game or last week was probably his last ever game in a Detroit Lions uniform which sucks obviously for one of my favorite quarterbacks personally that I've ever seen in Matthew Stafford uh, but hopefully he can get onto greener pastures on a different team but with that said for fantasy football Matthew Stafford will be a set if he plays Chase Daniel if he's the starter will be a sit as well mister you like that Kirk Cousins will be a start for me in this game I see no reason why the Vikings would bench Kirk Cousins at any point in this game so I think mister you like that is going to have a very strong performance here up against a not so hot Detroit Lions defense next game here we got the Falcons at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers now the last time these two teams faced off it was quite the battle the Atlanta Falcons were up by a zillion and just like normal when the Falcons play against Tom Brady they end up choking the game and losing Tampa Bay Tom Brady as well as Matty Ice played quite well in that game now the Falcons will not be sitting down Matt Ryan in this matchup so he's definitely good to go in my opinion up against a Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense that may be potentially sitting some players now the issue with Tom Brady is how much of this game does Tom Brady play? Do they want to play him or do they want to be resting him for the playoffs? I don't know. I do not know as of right now. My assumption is that he plays a majority of this game, and if they end up benching him, it will be because of a very dominant performance like we saw Tampa Bay Tom Brady put up last week up against the Detroit Lions, so I do expect Tom to be in the driver's seat in this one and really play strong up against the Atlanta Falcons. Next game here, we got the New York Football Jets at the New England Deflatriates, and in this one, I'm going to be sitting down both quarterbacks in this matchup. Sam Darnold, while has looked much better, I don't expect this one to be a real barn burner where I their quarterback is really putting up big point totals and what a fall from grace from Cam Newton. Cam Newton's gonna win the MVP is what the Patriots fans were telling me. Cam Newton's gonna turn the Patriots around after Tampa Bay Tom Brady left us is what they told us. Right? You guys remember that. Cam Newton fucking sucks. He is atrocious. He's not good anymore. The Jets while they're not even a good defense, will probably contain Cam Newton. I expect this one to be a very low-scoring game, so I don't want anything to do with Mono Man Sam or Wham Bam Cam in this matchup next game. Here we got the Miami Dolphins at the no-one circles, the wagons, like the Buffalo Bills. And in this one, I'm going to be firing up Mr. Josh Allen. Now, the uppercase L is because this man's going to be holding an L to the Miami Dolphins. As my Dolphins make it into the playoffs, I'm speaking it into existence like my name is LeVar Ball. I like the Dolphins, but Josh 
Allen is probably going to put out a barn burner here. This one is going to be a high scoring matchup. And even if the Dolphins defense slows down Josh Allen's passing attack, he's still going to run enough to be worthy of a start. And I don't think the Buffalo Bills plan on sitting down Josh Allen in this matchup, which is very scary if you are a Dolphins fan. But with that said, I think Josh Allen still puts up a good matchup, even though I want my Dolphins to win, so there's really no bias in this. I am going to be sitting down to a tongue of Iloa. Why? Because I don't know what Brian Flores thinks. I don't know how long the leash is for Tua. Does Tua play decent? Does he get tugged out? Does he just get tugged out like fucking... Uh, fucking Robert Kraft at a massage parlor. Does he get tugged out that fast? Or do they wait a while? And then if it's really down bad, do they go with Fitzpatrick? I don't know. I don't know how long his leash is. Next year, it's just going to be all Tua, right? Fitzpatrick's going to be gone. It's just going to be the Tua train. So you really will know next year, oh, I could start him this week. You want to know why? Because there's no chance he gets pulled out of the game. Here, there's definitely a chance for that. As a Dolphins fan, I would advise you to sit Tua, tongue of Iloa. Next matchup here, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers at the... Cleveland Browns now. Man, oh man, this one is going to be tough for us Dolphins fans as the Pittsburgh Steelers have elected to sit Mason or to start Mason Rudolph over Big Ben Roethlisberger. Now the reports are that the other Steelers players are going to be starting. But what does that mean? Does that mean that everyone besides Ben is playing? Is TJ Watt playing? Is the defense playing? I don't know. Regardless, I'm not starting Mason Rudolph. I fucking know that for sure. Mason Rudolph uh, versus the Cleveland Browns is definitely a revenge game because last time uh, Mason Rudolph went toe-to-toe with the Cleveland Browns, he woke up uh, in the hospital with a fucking dent in his head because Miles Garrett slapped the shit out of him. But with that said, I don't think Mason Rudolph plays quite well in this revenge matchup. Uh, Baker Mayfield has been very safe as of recently. Uh, based upon if his receivers come back or not would really determine if I want to start or sit Baker Mayfield in this matchup. If Jarvis Landry, Rashard Higgins, and friends are eligible to play in this matchup and the Cleveland Browns don't have to start some guys that they took out of the stands last week, then yeah, I like Baker Mayfield, but if Landry's gone, if Higgins is gone, then I'd look elsewhere at the quarterback position this week. Next game up on the docket, we got the Dallas Cowboys at the new York football Giants. Now the Cowboys are going to be fighting for their life in this matchup for the playoffs. Potentially hilarious how a 6-10 and 10 fucking team, one of these guys may end up in the playoffs over the Washington football team due to a complete and utter dismantlement of the quarterback position in Washington. Dwayne Haskins, the stripper god, has been cut. Alex Smith is hurt. Heineke going to be playing? We're going to be talking about that a little bit later, but this game is weird. Andy Dalton gets a game that he could definitely win here up against the New York football Giants, but again, just like with earlier, I really don't feel like this game is going to be too much of a barn burner, in which both teams are putting up a decent score in this game. I think either team could win this game, if I'm being completely honest with you, and with the quarterback play kind of being sus at both sides of the ball, Andy Dalton, as well as Danny Fumbles, I don't really think I would want to start either of these guys in this matchup, so Dalton, as well as Jones, are going to be sets, even though Andy Dalton has has looked pretty good as of recently, so that's good for the Ginger Ninja Andy Dalton. Next game here, we got the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I do have Brandon Allen listed as a start here, but that is just blatantly false. Even after what you could describe as two stellar starts from Brandon Allen up against the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Texans, I just don't believe in a game the Ravens have to win that Brandon Allen stands any chance up against this Ravens defense. So I will be sitting him in this matchup. Lamar Jackson has the potential to be the number one option in fantasy this week going up against a bum Cincinnati Bengals defense. Even though they have looked good as of recently, I just don't believe they'll be able to knock out their division foe uh, in the Ravens here out of the playoffs. So I think Lamar plays very strong in this matchup. Now, if you guys have ended up enjoying again, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below if you have not already. And if you're not new, please make sure you hit that like button down below. Jaguars at the Indianapolis Colts. Now, in this one, I'm going to be starting up Phillip Rivers, but this is the revenge game from week number one. If you guys remember, Gardner Minshew went in to Jacksonville, fucking walking like Conor McGregor or Vince McMahon into the ring and just beat the ever-living shit out of the Indianapolis Colts. Does that happen again, or does Phillip Rivers get his revenge? Now, if I know anything about Phillip Rivers, this game really does scare me because Phillip Rivers trying to get into the playoffs, trying to put that dagger in to make his way into the playoffs, screams to me of complete and utter collapse job by Phillip Rivers. We saw it last week. They're up by seven. 
zillion on the Pittsburgh Steelers and they end up losing. Now, if they're up by seven zillion against the Jags and they end up losing, Phillip Rivers probably put up a decent point total. So I will be starting him up against a not so hot Jacksonville Jaguars defense this week. I'm going to be sitting down Gardner Minshew because I just don't think he has all that great of a game. And the Indianapolis Colts defense is definitely a very tough opponent next game. Here we got the Le Titans at the Houston Texans. Now the Titans just got dicked down in the snow last week by the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers was discount double pumping them right in the ass without the use of any lubricant. It was a murder on the field and Aaron Rodgers drove away in a Ford Bronco. Ryan Tannehill though in this matchup up against the Houston Texans. This one is going to be very high scoring in my eyes and I feel as though Ryan Tannehill is going to play throughout this whole game so I'm very confident in starting him in this one as well as Deshaun Watson. Now Deshaun Watson is more on the 50-50 side of playing or not. If he misses and the backup's playing, you're not fucking playing the backup up against the Titans defense. Deshaun Watson, though, if given the opportunity and the nod to go on Sunday, I really do like him here up against the Titans in their season finale next game here. We got the Arizona Cardinals at the Los Angeles Rams, and in this one, I like Kyler Murray, but that's only if he ends up playing. Now, obviously, Kyler needs to play in this game because the Cardinals need to win this game to make the playoffs. The Rams, not so lucky. They kind of need to win this game as well. They can afford to lose, but they probably want to win. But Jared Goff had to get surgery on his thumb, I believe, that he had to pop back into place in that game last week up against the Seattle Seahawks in their loss. So Jared Goff is going to be missing. So John Walford is going to be the starting quarterback of the LA Rams. Who the fuck is that guy? So I don't really trust him at all. But if Kyler plays, you have to play him. This is a must-win scenario for Arizona. And if Kyler gets the nod to go, I believe you have to start him in your championship next game. Here we got the New Orleans Saints at the Carolina Panthers. Now, how much does Drew Brees have to play in this game? In my opinion, I don't think he has to play very much, so I'm going to go ahead and sit him down. Why risk injury on Drew Brees, who literally got his rib taken out of him like he was Adam from fucking Adam and Eve, that Bible tale story, whatever you want to call it, Drew Brees? I don't think he plays very much in this game, so I'm just going to go ahead and stay away, hit him with the Michael Jordan fadeaway, and look to not be starting him this week. Teddy two gloves, Teddy throws a belt in a revenge game up against the New Orleans Saints. Could be decent, but again, I would definitely look elsewhere at quarterback this week. Next game here, we got the Packers at the Bears. Now, I got a feeling woo-hoo, that this game is going to be a good, good night, and Aaron Rodgers is going to play throughout this whole game. The Bears have the opportunity to make the playoffs, and Aaron Rodgers is going to play spoiler in this game and beat the ever-living shit out of the Chicago Bears. Now, there's definitely potential that any of these guys that I talk about get the sit down, and they sit them down. We will know closer to Sunday when I make the quarterback rankings video if guys are going to start or sit, but my assumption is that Aaron Rodgers plays in this game and plays enough to let the SmackDown brother Hulk Hogan style on the Chicago Bears. I'm going to be starting down Mr. Kissin Titties Trubisky in this matchup. Trubisky has been a baller, shot caller as of recently. For some reason, this Bears offense looks like one of the better offenses in the NFL under Mitch. Does Mitch save his job? Does Matt Nagy not get the axe after the season? Who knows? But what I do know is this offense is super hot fire. I spit that. Two and a half men, I watched that. So I like Mitchell Trubisky in this one up against the Green Bay Packers. Next game here. Here we got the Los Angeles Chargers at the Kansas City Chiefs. And in this one, I like Justin Herbert, the pervert, to cement his status as the rookie of the year in this game. Personally, I actually think James Robinson's season is crazier to where he should win it because he's undrafted. But the rookie of the year is a quarterback award. Justin Herbert beat the quarterback touchdown record. He's going to win it. Pretty fucking cut and dry here. Up against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs probably not going to be playing all their starters. I highly doubt Patrick Mahomes gets more than one drive in this game. Maybe a drive or two to get a little warm before they take their bye next week. So I think that Justin Herbert plays very well in this matchup. Just like the first time these two teams played. After Terod Taylor gets stabbed in the lung by his doctor. I'm going to be sitting down Patrick Mahomes in this game. Because I'm not too sure how many drives and how much usage he's going to get in this matchup. Up against the Chargers. Next game. Here we have the Seattle. Seahawks at the San Francisco 49ers and I think that the Seattle Seahawks should be playing their whole team because they want to win this game 
Russ didn't really need to cook it up last week. Instead of cooking up a five-star Michelin meal up against the Rams, he just cooked up some nice fucking microwavable mozzarella sticks or something and ended up winning the game. This week up against the 49ers, this is a true test to the Seattle Seahawks. Is the defense any good? Because they've proved to be pretty good recently. And is Russell Wilson good enough to beat a very strong defense coached by one of the most amazing defensive coordinators in the NFL? Can Russ win this game? Can Russ cook? You've played him all year. You got him here to the championship game up against the 49ers. You start him. But if you have other guys, I may end up looking elsewhere this week up against the 49ers, but I do think he's going to end up playing the whole game, which does get him a upper echelon above some of these other guys who may only play the first half of the game. I'm going to be sitting down Big Dick Bethard in this one because it seems like whichever 49ers quarterback is on the bench and then they pull out the other guy, so Bethard gets pulled, then Big Dick Nick Mullins will come into the game and throw like four fucking touchdowns against Seattle, but if... Bethard is to start. He just wouldn't be doing that, so I'm going to sit him down this week. Next game, here we got the Las Vegas Raiders up against the Denver Broncos, and in this one, I'm sitting both these guys down. These motherfuckers might put up a combined 100 fantasy points, and you think I'm kidding. This game could be a barn burner. This game could be a duel like it's Red Dead fucking Redemption. This could be a slang of either of these guys. I have no idea what's going to happen. I think Derek Carr plays well, and I think Drew Locke do, but there's also the potential that both of these guys completely suck cock in this one and play atrocious. That's kind of the Derek Carr and Drew Locke way, so I'm sitting both of them down, but if I had to lean one, it would be Mr. Derek Carr. And final game of the season, of the regular season, we got the Washington football team at the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, do the Eagles play Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz will be playing for his fucking career. If he has to play in this one, Jalen Hurts is playing for his career as well because he didn't look that great last week. Maybe they're second-guessing Jalen Hurts. Maybe. Maybe not. Jalen Hurts seems to be maybe Jalen Hurt a little bit. Maybe a little bit banged up. Up against the Washington football team, this is no grade-A matchup because the football team defense is scary. But I still think Hurts does just fine with the rushing floor. Uh, Alex Smith slash Tyler Heineke... Against the Eagles, this is a very easy matchup against the Eagles defense, but is Smith even healthy enough to play? Is Heineke even a good player? Who knows? Who knows? You're definitely not starting them in your championship, so good luck in everyone's championship game this Sunday. I do appreciate you guys having watched the whole video. If you made it to the end, leave a joke about Taylor Heineke's name. Have a great rest of your guys' day. I love you all. Overlaydfs.com. Link down below in the description. I love you all. Have a great rest of your guys' day. Let's eat a W like our name was famous Jameis Winston. As always, have a great rest of your guys' day. Moi. I love you all. Kaboom!